While doing research for my last video on Pokemon Go that you can click the link below to check out, and by research I mean running around New York City trying to catch as many Pokemon as I possibly could, there were some tips that I learned that I wish I knew when I first started. So I figured I would put a quick video together of the top tips that I learned that will definitely help you level up faster, catch more Pokemon, and just have a better time playing the game. So have you ever noticed that there is a colored ring inside the little white ring whenever you're trying to catch a Pokemon? So I read a lot of articles and they were all very conflicting, saying that when that other ring is larger, you have a better chance of catching the Pokemon. When it's smaller, you have a better chance of catching the Pokemon. So I figured I would do some experimenting. First up, there are four different colors of that colored ring. Uh, as you progress through the game, you'll see more and more, but it's green, yellow, orange, and red. Now, each color signifies how hard it is using what you're currently using, by the way, to catch that particular Pokemon. So green being the easiest, yellow being a little harder, orange being pretty hard, and red being really hard. You can actually change the color of the ring when you're trying to catch a Pokemon by using raspberries in your inventory, which help you make a Pokemon like you or something. And then also using different Pokeballs, like Great Balls and Master Balls. Now, regardless of the size and color of that ring, the goal is always to get it within the colored ring, not necessarily just the white one. So you'll notice that if you get it within the colored ring when the ring is rather large, you'll get still a nice message indicating that it was still better than missing the colored ring entirely. If it is slightly smaller, you'll get a great message, and if it's really small and you get it inside, which by the way is really hard to do, you'll get an excellent message. This indicates that the smaller the colored circle, and if you still at least get it inside the colored circle, the better chance you have of catching a Pokemon. Did you know that in addition to those rings, there are other rings in the game that you should probably pay attention to. There are rings around the Pokemon when they appear, and each one signifies why that Pokemon's there, which can be kind of helpful. So a white ring means that the Pokemon appeared there naturally, which also means that they might reappear there because people have noticed that certain Pokemon tend to appear in the same regions and sometimes in the exact same area over a certain period of time. The next ring is a purplish pink ring, and that means he's there because of a lure like the one that you actually put on a Pokestop. And finally, there could be a pink cloud around him, which means that he's actually there because of a incense that you used. Now, the important thing about that is that if you are playing with your friends, generally those other rings means that they might be able to see them as well, whereas an incense one, because only you get the benefits of an incense, means that do not scream out Squirtle, because you will just cause chaos for no reason. So next up, you might occasionally have run into one or two lucky eggs in the game. Now these aren't the normal eggs that you hatch and they become Pokemon. These actually are pretty interesting and when used strategically can end up giving you a lot of experience. So what they do is once you use one, it actually doubles all the experience you gain for the next 30 minutes. So you get 500 experience every time you evolve a low level Pokemon to its very next level, regardless if you've already done it before or not. Now you do this by using that Pokemon's candies. Now the candies you get every time you catch one of these Pokemon, you can also get a, one extra one if you have a lot of extra of that Pokemon and you transfer them to the professor, who then creepily turns them into a candy. So now the idea is save up a few of those uh, and save up as many of the candies as you can until you have enough that you have enough candies to upgrade maybe a few of them at one time. So for example, they cost 12 each. If you have 48 and you have four of them, good, then you're ready to go. Now, activate the lucky egg before you do that and then just start evolving each one. Instead of that 500 experience, you'll actually get a thousand for each one. Did you ever wonder what that little bar on the bottom right of the screen was for? Me too. I mean, I knew it had something to do with tracking Pokemon. That's pretty apparent, but it's really not very easy to understand. When you tap on that button at the bottom right, you're actually presented with a grid of the nine closest Pokemon. The idea here being that the top left of the grid is the closest Pokemon to you, whereas the furthest one away is the bottom right. So knowing that, while having this open, you can wander around and notice that they actually swap positions. This would mean that if it went up in the list, you're getting closer to it. If it went down the list, you are moving away from it and need to change direction. 
Now knowing this, obviously, it's a lot of trial and error and a pain in the butt, but it has been shown to help people catch specific Pokemon that they might need. For further instructions on exactly how to do that, you can click the link below. Okay, so next tip is don't waste your candies on powering up your Pokemon, at least not in the beginning of the game. Now the reason being is because if you waste those candies on the Pokemon in the beginning to level them up and you're not actually using them to fight yet, what's gonna end up happening is later on you're going to just find a higher CP level version of that Pokemon, probably higher than what you upgraded the last one to, just in the wild. And as soon as you do that, it'll just make you extremely angry. So next up, a couple of tips about gym battles. In the world of Pokemon, there's a very much a rock, paper, scissors-esque kind of chart on how all of the Pokemon interact with each other. CP is one thing, but if you have, say, a water Pokemon going against a fire Pokemon, that water Pokemon may have a much lower CP and still do well against the fire with a much higher. For a full list of all of them, because there's a lot of different types and they you know, it's like a web, how they work. Click the link below, I found a chart for you that makes it a lot easier to figure out. Now, the defending Pokemon at the gym are automated. The person is not controlling them. So, they actually, some people have noticed at least, attack on a specific regular interval. 1.5 seconds is what most people are saying. Not to mention, there's also a yellow flash that comes across the screen to kind of warn you that an attack is about to happen. So instead of just button mashing and tapping the crap out of the other Pokemon, what you should be doing is waiting for that yellow flash, swipe left or right so you then dodge that incoming attack, and then get in a couple of attacks, yellow flash, swipe to dodge, and repeat. And there you guys, some quick tips that I think really probably make a big difference in the game. And again, I wish I knew when I first started, but meh. Uh, if you guys like this video, uh, let me know in the comments below. If there's other Pokemon Go videos you want me to do, please also let me know below, or other videos in general. We can move on from Pokemon. It's up to you guys. You tell me. Otherwise, if you guys like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching.